Since the release of Windows 10 in July of 2015, there's been about five or six preview releases with bug fixes and some other changes and some features. Nothing big here, but we're going to go over each of the releases and show you what's changed and what you can look for when you receive your update. So the first release was a short 20 days or so after the initial release of Windows 10 and uh, in August. And uh, one of the first things they did was a very uh, small change, but uh, something that might, everybody might like is that you go to personalization here, and you can see here you go down to colors. Now some of this stuff was here already, uh, that you don't have anything new here, but you have more colors, and if you scroll down, you'll see that you, it changes uh, how it affects different parts of your screen. So the first thing you'll notice as I turn all these off, you'll see that the uh, taskbar at the bottom is just uh, not colored, okay, and between solid and transparent. So if we go over here, and we'll see that everything's just gray, and it's, uh, you see it's transparent or not, depending upon the setting. So now we're going to turn the color. You see that the taskbar has changed. So as the uh, action center, and if we go over here to the start menu, it too has changed. So uh, first, I'll, I'll pick a different contrasting color so you can see exactly what's going on. And you'll see that the taskbar has changed color. So it has the start menu. And if we go over here to the, the action center, it has as well. Now, using the same ones, I'm going to make them transparent. You see the taskbar is transparent. Action center is transparent. And the start menu is transparent. Also, if I bring up another window, you'll see, uh, like on the file manager, you'll see that the title or the file manager changes as well. you see it's blue to match the theme that you're on. Uh, one thing, this didn't really occur completely until a later release uh, of the preview here, uh, but it is a solid uh, color now. Small changes for most, a lot of people, but they were one of the most requested ones during the uh, preview programs or insider feedback. It says we want to be able to control that like we used to be able to. Not as much, but at least you have some control over your colors. Now, the next part of this update, you're not going to see it at all, unless you, or even if you open up Task Manager like I'm doing here. It's really how Windows mem uh, keeps stuff in memory. And what they used to do, they used to write the programs to disk when they're not being used. Well, now they're going to use a compressed format, which means that it's going to compress it in memory, use up less space. They can keep more programs in memory, which means when you recall that program, uh, it's going to snap up that much quicker. Again, something you're not going to see, uh, but it'll actually affect how well it, it actually operates. So if I, as many programs I bring up here, uh, Windows will handle multiple programs much more efficiently. So that's all it really was in the first update, so let's move on to the uh, second one. So uh, a mere nine days later, they released another update. One of the first things you'll notice that if you're on a tablet and you're using a finger or if you're using a mouse, the context menu changes. You know, if I right click here, the context menus are pretty much together. Okay, but if I use my finger to right click, in other words, hold it till it comes up, you'll see they're much further apart, making it easier for tablet or people to use uh, touch screens in order to choose an item. Again, another small tweak, but one that's been requested by a lot of people in the uh, feedback program. Speaking of which, uh, if you haven't done the feedback program yet, uh, you'll want to do it, and here's uh, here's why. Now, if you go to the menu, and you start menu, and you click on that and go to All Apps, if you don't already have it, you go down to W, and you'll find the Windows Feedback Program. And what they've done is they've improved this. They have better categories of things. And you'll be able to see here what everybody's requesting. You'll be able to add a vote to that to add a... Uh, a vote that gets it uh, more visibility. You can submit your own feedback. So it's a great way for you to do it. The, the program has been very much uh, uh, updated and made easier to use. Uh, so that was the other big part of this release. Now in the next rollout, uh, again, less than a month later, they brought out quite a few changes. One of the first things you want to take a look at is the start and change it to the start menu. If you notice here, there's only room in each column for three tiles going across, either like one and a larger one or three across. Now, what a lot of people request is to have wider columns of four across. Uh, this has been an uh, ability to change the number of columns has been in Windows Phone for quite a while. So if we go over here to Settings, 
and we come over here to personalization and we click on that and then if you look uh, under start you'll see the first option that says show more tiles so if we click over here you'll see in the illustration above it shows four tiles uh, so that being done let's go back and take a look at the start menu and you notice it's expanded to have four tiles now it's important to note that these are two separate columns so you can't sit there and do it but you can't expand it that way basically you don't have enough room for the fourth tile yet so if you grab one of your uh, tiles from that particular one uh, that particular set of columns uh, to make a fourth column so let's do that let's go ahead and uh, uh, look at this one over here and grab it and drop it now you see there's room for four tiles so if we grab one from the other side and we do the same thing and now you see we have two uh, columns of four tiles a piece uh, in it now, I don't particularly need four columns, so I'm going to go ahead and set it back, but uh, that's how you adjust the number of uh, uh, tiles in each column. Now, the next feature we're going to cover, it refers to when you're in tablet mode. So if you're a tablet person, I switch over to tablet mode here, or if you prefer on your desktop. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a split screen. Uh, this is a feature that actually went away for a little bit, and now we're just bringing it back. So there, there's the uh, two screens we have up. So let's say we want to bring up a third application. So let's say I uh, click on store, and I can drop this in either side to replace that one that's there. There's also been some bug fixes. For example, if you, it used to be that these would light up down here, the, the action center would light up when there's nothing pending that you haven't taken care of already. In this case, I can't, I'm not demonstrating it to you, but because it's fixed, it doesn't give you a false sense of something's waiting to be taken care of in the action center. Another requested change was, uh, again, we're going to go back to the start screen, and then we're going to go to personalization yet again uh, and click on it and we're going to go look at the uh, lock screen and you have the ability now to, uh, here of course they also improved the slideshow by the way uh, so it's more reliable to do that but uh, what really they added was the here, here was the ability to turn on or off the windows background screen on your start screen why it's not a big deal to me but some people requested it now, the next thing is that in Edge, there's been some changes. You won't realize it, but the ability to handle audio and video has been much improved. Uh, developers will uh, understand about this, and you'll see much more uh, stability or able to play things without plugins uh, by just using a function in Edge. So we're going to move over now to some of the application changes that they've included. One is in Outlook. In an Outlook now, uh, much more like the Windows Phone version. Uh, but the big, the big thing here is, it's not really a big thing, but it's really about a private customization of changing your background and colors and all that, however you want. So you go over to Settings, and you can set on your personalization, and you can change this to look whatever you want. You can change the color, the highlights, the thing. It's not linked to your system anymore. So you can make that uh, experience in Outlook uh, however you want it to look. Uh, change the background like I said and makes it easier on your eyes if you want it lighter darker uh, what colors you prefer now in here I brought up the photo app and you'll see there's a new uh, way of categorizing before it was just collections and albums but now you have actual folders just like real windows used to have so you can browse them and your brain can work with the folders view rather than collections and albums so in this release uh, they've done uh, quite a few different things to improve the uh, stability and and some critical bug fixes as well. Uh, they also fixed something in the text panel for foreign languages. Sometimes the language was too long to fit in the text box. Uh, again, some crashing on the start menu. A lot of good fixes in this release. So, let's move on to the next. So, just under a month later, uh, build 10.565 came out. One of the first uh, things I investigated was the changes to the Cortana. If you click on Cortana here, you not only she will actually look at your uh, appointment calendar. Like I made an appointment here, a test one for, with the number one in it. It also saw my Fandango uh, receipt for my uh, Spectrum movie tickets. Uh, so it puts that in to remind me that I have that. So it'll scan all these things. Now I know there are some conspiracy theorists out there who are afraid of that. So let's go into the configuration of, of Cortana and take care of that. Now, there's all sorts of configuration settings in Cortana. So let's go over here to the notebook first, and you'll see that they have all these different things here that she can report on for you. Uh, your name, favorite places, you know, all this stuff. 
uh, that you can go ahead and change. However, uh, if you go over here, you'll see a list of the actual items that uh, are there. And then these are some of the things that Cortana is telling you that she can do. So once you realize what she's reporting on to you, uh, and some data goes to Microsoft, reminders and all that stuff, how they're used, not your personal reminders, uh, you can go in here and make an intelligent decision on how much you want versus how much you want being notified uh, or privacy. So if we go over here and we go into settings, uh, and first of all, you can turn Cortana uh, on and off, and there's a privacy statement and all that. So uh, after this statement here, you'll see a statement that says, uh, manage what you Cortana's going to know about you. We're going to come back to this in a second. But first, we're going to scroll down and take a look at find flights and more. This is basically scanning your email for any events that you might want to be reminded of. If you had a flight that you had tickets for, or maybe a notification about a flight coming in for a friend, or that movie ticket like I just had. But let's go back to this personalize. Once you click on it, you'll log in to uh, the uh, Microsoft Bing personalization uh, under your account, and you'll be able to see uh, different kinds of things, uh, personal info kind of stuff. So let's go take a look. So if we go in here and we look up uh, different things here, you know, talk tells us about what we're going to do as far as configuration. And there's the thing we're going to click on. But first, if you're worried about your privacy, go down here uh, where it talks about uh, that, and you can click there to get more information about it and all the content, all the information you need to make an intelligent decision on what you're going to be sending off and not. Again, down here, you're not going to get your all those notifications from uh, Microsoft uh, if you turn all of these options off. With that, I don't care. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go ahead and configure uh, the manager. And to do that, you go back up here and you click on here. You go off to Bing and here's all the different things. I have a couple Dow Jones things, news, sports, all the things I want to know about. So you simply add or delete as necessary and say yes, no, weather, whatever. Very simple, very benign. So that's about it. So here's a cool feature that uh, is Windows Phone, but we'll talk about it here for Windows. If you click on uh, the menu here, and let's go bring up the People app, and you click on People. Uh, this is your contacts, basically, and so you, now you can put them to start. So I'm going to scroll down here to a contact, and right-click on it and say Pin to Start. And sure enough, it's going to ask me where I'm sure. And there it is uh, on the start menu, ready to use. In case you want to do a Skype call, maybe, or send an email, or whatever, it's available for you to just click on right from there without having to go look it up. Now, here's a nice feature that uh, you're probably used to seeing. Uh, but you can have multiple tabs open up. And let's say I'm going to go to Microsoft Garage here first. And I'm going to open up an extra tab here. And uh, let's click on, ooh, and let's go over here. Okay, so now we have Wikipedia up and the garage. If we hover over the tab, you get a preview of the page. So if you're going to go click back to, you see you have five, six, seven tabs open, and maybe even two to the same website, you'll actually be able to see what page you're on before actually clicking on the tab. Might save you a fraction of a second time. Uh, so good, uh, tab preview is now built into Microsoft Edge. Now, Microsoft has changed uh, how they handle your default printer. Your default printer now is the last printer you pointed to. Few of us have uh, multiple printers, but maybe it's PDF, it could be. So uh, you want to have Windows management, you use this option here to uh, manage that. So you click on uh, this on or off to do it. If it's on, Windows management manage it. So if I go up here, there is no option when I click on this uh, to set it as default printer. Okay, it's not enabled. Uh, same with any other uh, option I choose. So I have to go down to the let Windows manage my default printer for me, turn it off, and now you'll see that I can change defaults. I'm leaving it to where it was the old way, where I chose my default and doesn't move unless I do it during the print printing process. Now, the next uh, thing that uh, they released is a uh, Changes to Skype, and now it integrates with your messaging and your action center. Uh, I'm not a big Skype user, so I'm not going to demonstrate it here. But basically what you can do now is you can go into Skype and 
uh, or in messaging as well, and make replies. And from the Action Center, if you have an alert about a text message coming, you can just click on it to do a Skype uh, call to that person. So uh, if you are a Skype, unlike me, if you're a Skype person, uh, go investigate Skype and how it integrates uh, well with your system now so you don't have to launch it every time you need to do a reply. Now going back to the Start menu, uh, changes there in the context menu. They've been uh, cleaned up and look a lot better. Uh, some new icons and stuff. So if you click on, right-click on anything, you'll see the items here. Again, if you're a touch person, you have to press and hold, and then it'll come up and you have to touch the three little dots in the white circle. So if I press and hold here on Mail, you see those dots there. You press there and you get your right menu. And again, it's spread out better uh, for touch users, easier for them to get the right item. So uh, moving on from the Start menu, we're going to go over here to the Store, which you know, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate this, but apps downloading in the background was hit or miss before. So you'll be able to get, as soon as an app update is available, it will automatically download, download the updated app to you uh, and let you get the, the newest version of the app without you having to go hunting it down. Now the last thing I'm going to cover is the synchronization of your reading list and your favorites which I covered the uh, reading list a little while ago in one of my other videos because it's a nice thing to do. It's like a shortcut uh, that you can keep to an article or something like that. Well, here, this allows you to not get so complicated with favorites and reading list and allows you to sync them together. So there's other some back-end improvements and things like that in this release as well. So let's go on to the one released on October 29th, building 10576. Uh, if you noticed before in one of my other videos, you can actually click on things in Edge and right-click on them and Cortana can get you more information. Well, now you can do it from PDFs. So I'm in this PDF. I can highlight a word, say, Ask Cortana. She pops up with everything you want to know, actually too much to know about that particular subject. Now, lastly, you could, uh, you could always, from your device, you could always broadcast to a connected wired or internet TV uh, from your uh, settings on your notification center. Well, now you can just do it from uh, right here, from Edge. You just go over here, click there, and you'll see here the uh, broadcast. And then it goes out and tries to connect up to your device. Of course, you need to have a TV or a Miracast enabled device to connect to. So the last build was just put out a few days ago, uh, and it is exactly what Windows 10 uh, is the uh, update that you receive. You'll notice there's no numbers down here. In the previous windows, there was a preview number. This is the full uh, update, the Threshold 2 update. So if we go over here and we look, and we look at About, you'll see that the title is no longer Preview. It's uh, It says what it is. Now, you didn't see Preview because you weren't on a Preview program. It's all about some bug fixes, mainly about stabilization to make your Windows uh, experience that much better. So there you have it. That's about everything that uh, was in the updates. There's some other application updates, uh, better uh, uh, universal apps and things like that. Uh, things that work on a Windows phone if you have one of the same exact way to work in Windows. But uh, it just mainly gives you some personalization tweaks, some more functionalities, and really makes it run that much smoother with very few crashes. So again, uh, there you are. There's your uh, list. Go out and enjoy the new Windows uh, Threshold 2 update. Hey, and don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. Come on back for Windows 8 and Windows 10 and Windows Phone 8 and Windows 10 and general how-to videos all here to help you make the most out of your system.